Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Personal Financial Planner. In this training, I'm going to show you how to create this incredible personal financial planner along with automated financial entries, dynamic admin screen, and a comprehensive dashboard showing income, spending, and net worth. It's a training you won't want to miss, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me, the Personal Financial Planner. This is going to be a really incredible training. We're going to cover spending, income, net worth, and most importantly, how do we enter those transactions? In fact, we can enter expenses, income, payments, and transfers. We can also enter multiple entries. Even with just a click of a button, we can automatically enter unlimited types of entries for the future. And of course, we've got a dynamic admin screen where we can enter our own income, expense, account, along with initial balances we can even set some monthly and overall goals so it's going to be great and then this dashboard is going to tie it all together with our net worth planner we're going to have income here spending and of course we will also have a great timeline where we can click and automatically adjust the graphs and charts here we're going to show you that we're going to create this really cool menu and i'm going to show you a whole lot more so i hope you'll stick with us it's going to be a great training i do bring these to you each and every week and i hope you do appreciate them i put a lot of time and effort in because i want to make you not only great with excel but successful with excel and that is my goal here all you need to do of course is just click on the subscription below in YouTube. And of course, don't forget to set the notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings and alerts sent to you every single Tuesday when I create these. It's absolutely free. If you want to download this, you can using the links down in the description. However, if you do want to support the channel, there are so many ways to do that. First of which is by grabbing my 250 template pack. That's 250 of my best templates and it's got one low price. In fact, I'm gonna put in a mini accounting application for no additional cost and I'll have that for those of you who wanna purchase the full 250 with PDF. Another great way is our Patreon platform. Each and every week I take these templates and then I take on your suggestions, your ideas, your comments and I add on to that. I create an additional training and an updated workbook and make that available to you based on what you want. So whether it's a feature you want, you want to fix something or maybe you want me to focus on something. Also available on our Patreon platform is unreleased features and trainings. We've got PDF codebooks downloadable, early bird discounts. We've got also got supporting trading resources like the icons that are used in this pictures of course so that you can quickly assemble your own workbooks and of course full video downloads that way you can watch these trading anywhere anytime even without internet full video downloads and of course members only discount that's only available on our patreon platform i'll include the links down below and i'd appreciate your support for just a few dollars a month all right thanks let's get started on this so basically we're going to break this up into three major components and the first of which is to be able to enter data we want to quickly and easily enter data whether we're we're entering expenses income or payments we want to be able to quickly add an entry save an entry and have that entry updated or saved or new entry so we want to be able to enter expenses income payments or transfers very quickly and very easily we also want to be able to access prior payments we want to maybe show only income or maybe we only want to show income or expense or payments so we want to quickly be able to get to those previously entered transactions and have them display so that's one component the next major component is we want to be able to work with the data and calculate the data so we've got all of our data but we need to be able to calculate it right we need to to present that in a way but before we can do that we need to do that and we'll be doing that with some pivots here we've got some calculations we'll be focused on the net worth how do we calculate that to get the total uh, available using all those transactions what's the current balance of each individual account what are the total expenses and the total income based on the data entered so working with that data is the second component and then lastly we're going to focus on displaying that data we want to display it in a very user-friendly way so users can quickly see where they are in their financial plans how far they've reached have they reached their goals yet if not how far are they away and what is their breakdown right in we wanted to be able to present it in a very easy and familiar manner just in this three tabs so they can see a lot of data 
in a very short period of time and it's easy to consume and they understand everything as far as their monthly income and expenses and then of course their net worth at a glance they can do that so those are the three areas we're going to be focused on and the first of which is the financial entry so how do we create this financial entry we got also got a menu here we can click from the dashboard the entries and the admin that's a very simple one line macro and i'll be showing you how to do that one single line of code to do this so we're going to be going into that so let's go over this entry how do we arrive at that we've got entries by type right we can have different types of entries this is our entry type we've got four different types of entry income expense payments and transfers right so what i want to be able to do is i want to be able to simply click an expense or simply click an income i want to be able to locate those very very easily what income types are they now those income types all originate from the admin screen so inside the admin screen we have four different income types right we have paycheck bonus workbook and you can add anything you want and of course we've got some additional expenses we can add that i've also got some accounts right what kind of bank or asset accounts bank or asset accounts are something that you have right something that you you know is an asset something and it could be anything it could be tangible like cash right or an account or it could be intangible such as like maybe a home equity where it's equity you have built in your home or it could be stocks that you have that have a somewhat intrinsic value although maybe not a cash value at the moment but there is value to it an ira maybe you can't touch it yet but it does have built-in equity and it is considered an asset right also maybe a time it so we can keep track of all those assets and of course we also want to know the liabilities what are the credit cards what do we owe right what type of money do we owe is it a car loan do we owe a friend a loan do we owe credit cards right what is our liabilities currently money we want to always make sure that our assets of course are greater than our liabilities and basically our net worth is simply our assets minus our liabilities and that's going to get it as we can see here in the dashboard our total assets minus our total liabilities is our net worth so we're going to be able to put that together that's a really a basic i also want to be able to create i want to know what i want to reach a certain level of income per month let's say maybe i want to set my income goals to maybe 7500 we should probably color these white because they're user entered so i'm going to go ahead and give these a color white to make sure that we denote that that is available for the user to make those changes a little bit clearer there so what are our goals for our income what do we want to reduce expenses maybe our expenses are three thousand or thirty five hundred and we're going to try to reduce them down to around twenty five hundred this is going to help us know how close we are to our goals i also want to know we want to increase our assets maybe to five hundred thousand and we want to decrease our liabilities what we owe other people or other credit cards or other entities we want to re reduce them down to certain levels so that means in our dashboard when we see here we want to make sure that we're we're currently our assets are 328,000 we want to increase them to 500,000 we need 171,000 more to do it our current liabilities are 72,000 we want to reduce it to 50,000 so we've got 22,000 more and of course our goals that combined right we know that we've currently got 256,000 in assets we want to increase that to 450 and therefore we've got 193 left to do that so we got an eye on that so we want to make sure that's why so in our admin screen we can create these goals now our admin's relatively simple that's it each of our accounts whether it's asset accounts or whether our liabilities count we have initial balance right if you're starting this today right what is the balance on your credit cards currently if you put in all the future transactions when do you know what the current balance is just like with the checking account if you're going to be adding income to your checking account and paying bills what is that initial checking account balance so you can put that in here and that's automatically going to get calculated based on the additional in entries that you put in what is the current balance of that it's going to start out with that initial balance so that's the basics that covers the basics there and so once we have these financial entries once we've entered them into our database here here's all of our financial entries here what we want to do is we want to be able to quickly locate a specific entry so the best way to do that is to simply use a filter an advanced filter so first thing you may want to do is you want to separate it by income so if we want to look up only expenses and i only want to look up grocery expenses and then maybe i say okay I, this is a lot of grocery expenses i've had in the last year maybe i want to just cut it to the last six months so i can just take a look at this six month of groceries and we see that it starts at in june 4th and goes all the way to the december 24th so we can quickly locate a previously entered uh expense item 
just by using these filters. And then, of course, we can select one. When we select one, it is going to load that entry. If we want to make, if our budget amount is 100, but we actually went a little bit over, we can make that adjustment here and then save that entry. If I decide that I want to create a brand new expense, I can click New Entry, and maybe I want to just put in a reference, or maybe you can leave this blank. It's not so, it's not so important. So let's just say we do one, two, three, and then we want to enter an expense type, right? Maybe we want something, let's say fitness, right? We're going to pay for the gym. Uh, we already have that. Let's choose something we don't have. Gifts and donations. Maybe we make a charity donation every month, and we're going to make it from our our, let's say our checking account automatic and we have budgeted a hundred dollars and then we also set the actual amount as one hundred dollars right and now we could just put gift to charity right now let's say we do this every month right I don't want to create the same transaction every month I want to do it in the future so I'm going to put create gifts every one month starting on Saturday let's say make this the 20 22 the current year and I want to create a total of 12 entries so now we can see this button says create 12 entries this is going to create one and it's going to start on January 16th so when I click that button it's automatically going to create those 12 entries just like that and then they're automatically created now when we click on 12 gifts have been added and see that notice it was real quick I can select here and we can see that they have all been added now if we change this filter down to the first of January you're going to see that all 12 have been added if I select on one we can then make an edit to that one. So it's very, very flexible, right? We can just save an update. So now we see we've we've made a change to this one where our actual amount was 120 and the difference is 20. We've budgeted 100, our actual amount's 120. So we can quickly go in and make changes to any previously created transaction. This allows us to create and fill the entry database very quickly on all of our regular types. And we can, of course, put it whether it's one time or reoccurring. This is kind of helpful, more of a note, if not a critical, important, but I had an extra thing. So we can let us know what kind of type is it. Is it a frequency? Is it a reoccurring type or is it a one time? That might help us in the future. So I've added that in. So we can quickly create one or more entries. We can also look it up and very quickly edit one just for the few clicks. So let's go ahead and see exactly how we did that. And of course, every time we save it, it's gonna get saved inside this database. Each entry comes with a unique ID, a type, what is it, an income expense transfer, or is it a uh, payment? What is the frequency type? Is there a check or bill number? We can update that. An entry date, the date that it was entered. An income or expense type, what type of that? And what account was associated with that? Now, if it's a transfer, it could be two different accounts. Keep that in mind. And also, if it's a payment, it could be two different accounts, too. If you're paying a credit card bill from your checking account, you're going to have from the checking account here, and then you're going to have the credit card here. Okay. What is the budgeted amount? What is the actual amount? And then some notes. So we're going to tie all that into a single database here called Financial Entries. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's get into VBA and start out with the left. Missed an icon here. I think it's just in back. Let's go ahead and bring that to the front, right? Picture format, and we'll bring that to the front here. Bring to the front. Okay, there we go. That looks better. All right, so we've got that here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go over, we'll start out with this filter here, right? When we make a change to... Uh, any type when we want all types I want to make sure that all those types are listed here right so we can use an advanced filter to do that of course we're going to be filtering out this database so the first thing we want to do is filter this data based on the entry type and we need some criteria for that and I've got some criteria right here notice it says entry type we're filtering it by entry type now if I want to filter it if I look in here and I want to filter it by only income accounts I want to make sure that that criteria inside there is only income. If we take a look here, we see it is only income. So we know that this particular is tied with a formula to that cell. If the if it the financial entries F4, which is the cell that we just changed, equals all types, then just show does not equal empty. Otherwise, show whatever's in there. And this way, it's just going to show it's going to list all types if it's if the user has selected all types. Otherwise, it's going to show whatever it is. So if I have income, and then I want the results to come here so that I know that only income types, these income types, these are the results. So this is where we're going to get our results right here. Entry type of income, and then all the associated, the unique income types here. If I select all types, we're going to show all types and we want the income. So we know we've got them here. All right, so we can see that now it is does not equal empty and it's going to load all that. All right, so how do we do that? Well, of course, that's in a macro, right? We can go into the developers and go into the visual basic and we're going to go right into there. Alt F11 is a shortcut and we're going to focus on the entry macros. We've got three different modules, one with some admin macros, one with the dashboard macros and one with entry macros. Entry is the one we're going to be focusing on first. And the macro that does that is called 
called entry types, right? The macro that does that filtering is called load entry types. Now, if we notice, right, that macro, when does that macro run? That macro runs when we make any type of a change to F4, F4. So that way, when we pull up this sheet, this entry sheet, this is our entry sheet. When we make a worksheet change to F4, that's when we're going to have it. So if we take a look right here inside the code, on show entry name change, run macro to populate list. If on inter if not intersection target range f4 is nothing then run this macro right if we want to locate that macro right click go to the definition right so we just click definition and that's going to go right to this macro which is located in our entry macros first thing what i want to do is i want to make sure we clear out any of the initial data right i'm going to take a look at all this data here i want to clear it out because i'm going to be bringing new data in here so E6 all the way through F and down, I want to clear that out. So that's just what we're going to do. Now there's also a row that's associated with that. When I make a selection of a row, I want to make sure that the row that I've selected also gets cleared out. That row that's been selected is located right here inside A. Let's unhide some admin columns. I'm going to right click and unhide it. And we're going to see that the selected row is located right here in B6. B6 is where it is. So notice as I select a row, B6 changes. And we'll get into the selection change event in just a moment on another macro. But we want to make sure that when I clear this out, when I change this, I want to make sure that it gets cleared out because we don't know what the user select. So I also want B6 and B7. Now B7 is the specific entry that's been selected. So it's B7. So not only do I want to clear out B6, which is the row here, I also want to clear out B7. So those two cells get cleared out along with all the data. So we can do that with just one line of code right here. We're going to focus on the entry database. That's going to, we're going to take our focus because that's what's going to run our advanced filter. We're going to determine the last row of data using and Excel up. That's going to be row 310. Once I know the last row, I'm going to run an advanced filter and we're going to have specific criteria. That criteria is going to be 02 through 03. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen me do advanced filters hundreds of times probably, and they're really powerful. So, you know, the repetition helps. So we're going to have, of course, the results come through Q2 through R2. And that's just what we're going to do here. First, we're going to determine the last row of that database. If it's less than three, that means we have no, that no data, right? Actually, we're going to put less than four. Actually, look, our first row of data is on four. So we want to make sure it's less than four. So if it's less than four, we're going to exit this up. Then we're going to run that advanced filter. We're going to start out with those header rows A3 through F, and you certainly want to make sure that your header rows A3 all the way through F is fine because we're only, we don't need to know all this data. We're not filtering this data at this time, so we're only going to focus on this up to the income and expense account here. We want to make sure that the criteria, when we set that criteria, most of the issues, entry type, this header must be exactly the same, and so are these as your original data. So make sure when you're adding that criteria or you're adding the results, what I just, just do is I copy this and I just simply paste it up here just to make sure that we have the right exact text, right? I want to make sure it's exactly right. So we're going to run that criteria and we're going to get those results. We're going to determine the last row of the results based on column Q and that's what we're going to do inside the code. So our criteria is 02 through 03. Our results are Q2 through R. That's where we're going to have our results. And then we're going to determine the last results row based on column Q, right? Once we get that into variable, we want to make sure that we actually have data. So if the last results row is less than three, that means we have no data and we can exit the sub. If we do have data, what I want to do is I want to take all the results of that data and I just simply want to bring them directly over inside this area right here. And we have conditional formatting that will automatically cover that, give it that alternating color along with the selected row. So this particular line of code is going to bring all the data over, bring it from the database here into our entries row, starting on row six here and the last results row. Now, since this starts on row six and we're pulling our data from row three, we need to compensate for the difference in rows. So we're going to need to add three. That is it for the database. Then what I want to do is I want to see. Now let's say I clear this data. Let's say I, I rerun this and I want to find out if this has been selected. I want to see if there's a particular been selected and I want to select the row. So what we want to do in this case, I want to if N10 does not equal empty, N10 is right here. Let's take a look at this. What I want to do is I want to select expenses 
and I want to select, let's say this, it should be N9. Let's take a look at that, N9, N9, because it was not working, but I'm going to show you exactly why I just got that wrong, and N9 up here. See here and nine. So what I want to do when I run this there, I want to sit there. You see it now working. I want to select whatever has been. Notice that fitness is here, right? If I change this to utilities, right? And we see that we have a utilities. I want to look up utilities and I want to find utilities here. If it's found, I want that row, whatever row that is, row 10. I want that 10 to be put directly in B10. Because why is that? Because it, let me just stop the code right here okay and now we'll, because i don't want it to run i don't all the way so what happens is it's the code stop but i want to know what row should be selected notice we have utilities loaded here right we have utilities loaded here so i want to select utilities here i want to show that utilities is the one that we're developing these are utilities right these are this is utilities so i want to make sure that row 10 is selected so what i want to do is i want to grab the value here and i want to look it up here if it's been found i want to take whatever row has been found and i want to place that directly in b6 so as we continue on with the code that's exactly what's going to happen that 10 is going to appear here it's going to trigger that conditional formatting if we want to take a look at that conditional formatting we can notice that that shouldn't happen see when i select it we don't want that so let's fix that issue when i select more than one cell i don't want anything to happen so on entries right let's take a look at the selection change event i'm going to put in a little bit of code right here if target dot count large is greater than one meaning the user selects more than one cell then exit the sub exit sub okay so that's kind of important and then what we want to do because when i was showing you something i want to select more than one i don't want anything to happen right now nothing's going to happen because i've selected more than one cells okay, so i've got a utility selected here i want to make sure that when i run this code i want to make sure that utilities automatically get selected here continuing on with the code that's what's going to happen and we can undo that so how are we going to do that well the first thing what i want to do is i want to make sure it's not empty if it's empty like let's say it's a new entry we wouldn't know what to select so that's fine but if it's not empty we need to know what to select so what we're going to do is wherever it's found we're going to place it in b6 however if it is not found it could create an error a bug so what we want to do is we want to wrap it in on air zoom next and on air go to zero however if it is found we want to take whatever row it's been found and we want to place it in b6 so where are we going to look we're going to look in f6 through f999 what are we going to look for we're going to look for whatever's in n9 we're going to look in the values and hole and we want to extract the row so i want to take that row that it's been found and want to put it in b6 if it's found that's it that's all we have to do so that way notice if we have weekend work here we've selected a specific weekend work and then i go ahead and clear that out i want to make sure that it is weekend work that gets selected again very good so i'm glad i got to show you that part now when i make a selection here we want this list to load up i want to know all the entries based on utilities f between this date and this date and i want to load them all in here and that comes with a macro so that happens on selection change notice when i make a selection change this we're going to load up all of that items that are fit that description so how do we do that well the first thing that happens is on selection change so we go back into the entries entry sheet here we're focused on selection change right and we see that we're making a selection change anywhere from e6 all the way through f and then down okay so we're going to focus on that e6 through f and down make a selection we want to make sure that e contains a value right if there's no value in e we don't want anything to happen so assuming that there is a value then what i want to do is i want to know inside t3 in today's t3 i want to place whatever's this what's our criteria how we, we only want to know close so i want to take whatever's in f and the selected row i want to place it inside a criteria right we're going to run another advanced filter and it's going to be called here entry criteria right so what i want to do is i only want to know close and i only want to know between these two specific dates then we want to know all of the items all of the entry items that have closed between those two dates and i want those results to appear here once i get those results i want to then creep take those results and bring them directly inside here and so that's exactly what we're going to do so it is that selection change event that happens everything so the first thing what i want to do is take get that criteria inside t3 of our entry database t3 is very important because i need to know what we're going to filter on so t3 is going to take on what it's going to take on whatever is in f in the target row so if i have selected a row i know the target row is nine 
I know that F and the target row, weekend work, is where exactly where I want to place it inside T3. That's where I want to place it. Okay, so moving on. We know we've got that, so continue on. So what else do I want? Once I've got that criteria placed, I also want to trigger conditional formatting, right? Conditional formatting, let's just go over that, is based on that. So I want to take whatever row that's been selected, and I want to take that row, and I want to put it directly inside B6, inside B6. So B6 is going to take on that target row. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. If we go in here, home, go to conditional formatting, we're going to see three different rules. First of which is for that selected row. And basically all we're going to do is B6 equals the selected row. We're going to color it this dark background with this white bold font. I also want to call the alternating row. So we can use this formula for our odd rows. And we want to make sure that E6, make sure there's no dollar sign before 6 because we want it every row below that. And we want to know the odd rows, mod of row 2. That formula is going to get us that green, that little light green formula. It's going to apply to E6 to F99. For even rows, we're going to go with even a lighter color, nearly a white. And even rows, the only difference in this one is the mod equals zero meaning even rows this equals one meaning odd rows so odd rows are going to get colored this and we also want to make sure that the again there's no dollar sign before the six we want to make sure it's not absolute covering every row applying to that's it that's the same conditional format we're going to use basically for here and here it's exactly the same the only difference is this is going to be focused on row seven while this is going to be focused on row six okay the selected row notice the selected row will change to whatever we want it to when we select it. Okay, so after we've placed that row and the only macro that we're gonna run is called load entries. That is the next macro we're gonna go into. So entry, we already covered load entry types. Now the next macro is called load entries. And it's gonna be very, very similar, right? The first thing what we're going to do is clear out all the data. Now we do have some hidden data here. I wanna know that entry ID. Remember inside our database, our database in column A starts with an entry ID. This is a unique ID for every single entry. Entry. I want to place that, but I want it hidden. So how can we do that? Well, there's two ways to hide it, really. One is to change the font color the same as the background color. Another one is simply to change it to a custom format. So if we look in the more number formats, we've got three semicolons here. If I were to clear them out, maybe to put or put something general, now we can see that those entry IDs, right? So when the, this is important because when I select on something, I want to take whatever entry ID is here, and I want to place it directly inside B3. B3 is where entry ideas that's going to help us determine the row and i'll go over that in a moment so we want to make sure but we don't need to see these entry ideas so all we need to do to hide them is just go into the custom format and just change it with custom and just make it three semicolons so one two three semicolons and that will hide them all keep in mind if we are going to use the find to look for something let's say we're looking for something find using xl value let's say remember using when we use a find often we use something like xl values right but when we're looking for a specific number that's hidden we need to use xl formulas that'll find it even if the column is hidden or the, it's hidden or it's hidden through some formatting okay formulas will help us do that find what when it's hidden values will not all right so that keep that in mind so let's continue on with that macro now so loading the entries the first thing we want to do is cl clear any data i want to clear one the selected entry row which is in b7 and i also want to clear remember starting in g6 all the way through k and down we're going to clear out any data that might be here and that's going to handle it right here entries range b7 through g6 k999 that'll clear that out then again we're going to focus on that entry database we're going to do just like we did determine the last row we're going to get some criteria we know this has already been placed now the dates here for the criteria are linked to the dates here if it's empty here we want it to just show empty show all the dates however if it's date i want to show only this this date greater than or equal to this date and less than or equal to this date so we can do that right here with a formula now we want to use the dates in number format that's very important because regardless of the date format when it's in number format it'll work properly so if the financial entries does not equal empty then we're going to put greater than or equal the financial entries i4 that's that from date otherwise we're just going to show does not equal empty and we're going to put it there and the same for the entry date except we're going to focus on k4 if k4 is not empty we're going to show less than or equal to whatever's in k4 otherwise we're going to show it's empty and this is going to provide that necessary criteria for based on the specific income or expense type and the dates associated with that uh, entry so we can do that so our criteria is going to be from t2 
to V3. We're gonna get pull those, and we're gonna pull those results directly in here, all the way down here. I want it, I want the difference between our budget amount and our action amount. A formula is gonna take care of that. This formula, making sure that we have values both in Z3 and A3, as long as they're both available, that I want to subtract them. So if there's any difference, there's no differences in these. I'm gonna subtract out that difference and show it because I want that difference to show up here inside it, but that difference is not part of our database. So we want to use a formula to help us to do just that. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to be doing. And so again, we're going to, I want to clear the prior results. I want to clear this X through AB and because this formula wouldn't necessarily be cleared out automatically by VBA. So we want to make sure to do it starting in X3 all the way down, clearing out any data that might have been there before, determining the last row of our original data. If it's less than four, then we're going to exit the sub. We're going to run our advanced filter just like, well, this should not be JF. Our advanced filter should go all the way to the last and we're going to call that J, okay? So it should be J, although it still works. And then we want our results to come T2 through V3, T2 through V3. These were, this is where the criteria is going to come. T2 through V3. Our results are going to come in through X through AA. X2 through AA2. And that's just what we have here. X2 through AA. The last results row is going to be based on column X. If it's less than three, we're going to exit the sub. That means there's no results. Then what we're going to be doing is I want to copy down that formula. That formula is always going to stay in AB1. So all we need to do is take the formula in AB1 and copy it down from AB3 all the way to the last row. We don't really want to keep formulas in cells unless we're actually using them. Right? So we certainly don't want formulas all the way down here that'll slow up our workbook. We don't want that. So we can use VBA to bring down those formulas. Having some kind of calculation on demand or formulas on demand only when we need them. That keeps our workbook light and fast. So once we have bringing over those formulas, remember formula to formula, we're going to bring in all the results, taking these results from X3 all the way through AB and bringing them directly inside here, starting in G all the way through K. And that's what we do here. So G6 through K in the last results row, again, compensating for the row difference by adding three. Going to bring it all the way through X3 through AB in the last results row. This is going to bring over our entry details. And again, just as what I want to do before, if I run this filter, let's say I run this filter, let's say I'm running this filter. Notice I just ran the filter. Remember, when I run this filter, we're clearing out that selector. I'm going to run it halfway to right here. So when I run this filter here, it's it stopped. Notice there's no selected line, right? We don't know what line is selected because we could have added or updated. So it gets completely reset. But what I want to do is I want to, to select whatever entry is here. I want to select that. Now, remember, we have entry IDs here. So if I, I know that it's entry ID here. So let's take a look at this here. We see in G6, that's uh, G6, row six, we see that there's a 66 there. And we also, so what I want to do is I want to look up the entry ID, which is our selected entry. I want to look it up directly in G6 all the way down. If it's found on whatever row, I want to place whatever row and I want to place it directly inside B7. So if we continue on with the code, that's exactly what's going to happen. B7 is going to take on that row six. And then when it does, that triggers our conditional formatting to selected row so that we automatically know which one has been selected because it gets cleared out. So, and remember, since it's hidden, we're gonna use formulas. So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that there's a value in EB3. If there is, then I know I wanna look it up to see if it's found inside column G. So we're gonna do that here. If B3 does not equal empty, then again, B7, that selected row, is gonna take on whatever's located in B3. We wanna look for B3, and where am I looking? I'm looking in column G6 to G99. If it is found, we're using the formula, is very, very important, because it's hidden using, using formatting, right? So it's not gonna be able to find it. If it's not using the Excel formulas, we wanna extract the row then that row is going to then take on and go inside B7. And of course, if it is not found, it could create an error. Therefore, we always want to wrap using, when we're using find, we always want to wrap that on error zoom next and on error go to zero in case it's not found. Great, so now that we have that, we don't need this additional. So it's automatic, that'll automatically trigger that condition for me. And that's it, and that's all we have to do. So every time we refresh this or not automatically, any entry that's already here is automatically going to be selected. Note if I select this, it's cleared out and then it'll automatically be selected once we refresh that, if it's found, if it's found. Notice it's not found, right? It's not found here because I have it selected. Notice we're on weekend work, but we're focused on checking. However, as soon as I select it here and I refresh it, or if I check the same one, it's gonna be found. Notice it's found here, 
or I refresh this, it's automatically, that row is gonna automatically be found. And that's really important because we automatically know and can see exactly what entry has been selected. So it's very, very easy to up make those updates if needed. Great, so we're glad I got that. So now the next step, when I make a selection here, we see that what that does is it automatically loads this entry, this transaction here, it automatically loads the data. And that's relatively easy with just a few lines of code actually, because we're using data mapping. So on selection change of anything between H6 and K and all the way down, assuming that there's a value in H, I want to run a macro that's automatically going to load it. Now we need to know, we know it's coming from this database, but we need to know exactly where we're going to be place it. We can use data mapping to do that. If you've seen my videos before, you're very familiar with data mapping. And so basically we know that the entry type is located in N5. If we take a look at N5 here, we see the data types here, and we see that our frequency type here is in BP5. And so all we've done is simply map the cells on our entry screen with whatever the columns are associated here. Then all I need to do is loop through columns two through 10, and basically whatever is located in the row that it's been found, we can then load it up. How do we know what row it's been found? Well, we can calculate that. We know, we, we know we've already placed this entry ID here, right? As soon as we, well, we don't know that yet. As soon as I make a selection, I'll show you what happens. When we go to the entries here on selection change, we're focused on this. Now we're gonna be focused on entry selection. HK through K, as I mentioned, and we want to make sure that H, actually, we can use G or H, G contains, of course, that entry ID, is not empty, meaning there is a entry there. First thing we want to do is take, here it is right here, B3 is going to take on whatever is in G in the target row. That's going to set that entry ID. Once we set that entry ID, and then we set the selected row, it's automatically going to calculate the row. It's, how do we know that? That calculated row is going to be located right here. How do I know what row is located on? Well, of course, I can use an a match for that because I've got a name range called entry ID. If we look inside the formulas, name manager, and we take a look at entry ID, I've got many of them, we'll just focus on entry ID, and that's basically a dynamic named range in column A that's gonna set that entry ID. What that's gonna do, of course, it starts on row four, what that's gonna do is get us to extract the row, and that's what I want, I wanna know the row, entry ID 131 is located on row 134. Using this match formula, we're looking up B3, which of course is our entry ID. We're gonna look up inside that name branch called entry ID. We're gonna add three to that because I wanna know the row number, right? If the first one is found, I wanna know it's on row four and so therefore we're gonna add three. Okay, so we're adding three because they don't start on row one, they start on row four. So we always need to add three on that. Once I've got the row, I then know where to load it up, right? If I know the row and I loop through the columns, I know that um, on row 11, right, income is gonna go into N5. We know that one time is gonna go into P5. So we, you can use data mapping to do just that. I also wanna know the next entry ID, right? If we know all the entry IDs and making sure that they are actually value, numerical values, no letters in there, no alphanumeric, we can use the max formula. Adding one's gonna get us the next entry ID. So that way when we create a brand new entry ID, we know which is the next one to assign to that brand new transaction. Okay, again, so when we make a selection on here, that's what we want something to happen. So the next thing that happens happens on that selection is the entry load. That is the action, that is the macro that's gonna run this. So we go to entry macros and we're gonna see the entry load. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna go down here, skip a few and go right to entry load. So notice it's just a few lines of code. First thing we want to do is clear all the contents, right? When I'm loading an entry, I wanna make sure that all of these cells are cleared out. So we can do that with this line of code here clearing out all of the cells associated with that entry. Next up, I want to make sure that we have calculated a row. Without this row here in B4, we cannot load that entry. So we want to make sure that B4 does contain a value. So if B4 is empty, let the user know to select a correct entry and exit the sub. There's nothing we can do without a row. If there is a row, then of course, we're going to put that into a variable called entry at row. That is a long variable. And then what we're going to do is just as I mentioned, we're going to loop through columns two to 10 based on that entry database, right? Entry database, what we're going to do is we're going to extract whatever's in that row and whatever's in that column. We're going to extract whatever's in that cell and we're going to place it where? We're going to place it inside the entries. But where are we going to get that cell? That cell that we're going to place in is located in row one of the entry database right here. 
we're gonna place that in here. That's all we need to do to load that entry. Now that we understand how to load those entries, let's go back up and see the macros that we skipped, right? We covered load entries. I wanna to go to entry new. That is the macro that's been signed to this. When I click new entry, I wanna make sure that we clear out all the associated ones. Maybe we can keep the entry type payment in case they use up. We don't necessarily need to clear out. I wanna set the entry date to the current date, June 30th. And I just want whatever, perhaps whatever the user has said. So we don't necessarily need to clear out those. We can keep those defaults. And that way, if the user is gonna be entering a lot of payments, they don't need to keep entering it again and again and again. I wanna set the clear out everything else. So that we can keep this in in case they wanna create multiples. But I wanna clear out at least the, these fields, associated fields. And I also want to clear out this, the entry ID, right? Once we clear, B3 is very important because it's a brand new entry. Notice the entry row is empty. And that's because there's an error because there's no match found because there's no particular entry ID located in B3. Therefore, it isn't gonna result in an error. So we have if error gonna be blank. Okay, so we can make sure that B4 is blank. So B3 must be cleared out, right, along with all the other associated fields. We're going to set P7, that's our date field, we're going to set it to the current date. And we're going to set N7, we're just simply going to select N7. That's going to allow the user to automatically enter a bill of reference ID here. We're going to do that. So continuing on, so that's all that we need to do. So next up is going to be the save or update. If I want to save it, I want to make sure that all the information is there. So if I have information here, I want to make sure. However, keep in mind that's a little bit tricky because when, let's go for a new entry. If we're entering an income here, let's say we're entering income, I want to make sure that this says income type. So, however, if we're entering an expense, I want this to say expense type. If we're entering perhaps a payment, I want this to be payment from. And if we're entering a transfer, I want to know to be transfer from. So we want the label to be dynamic and change based on the entry type here. So we can do that with just some label. So if N5 equals income, N5 equals expense, if either one of those, then show N5 and type, right? So either it's going to show expense type or income type. Otherwise, it's going to show N5 from and from. So basically, it's going to be transfer from or it's going to show payment from, or it's going to show income type or expense type. So we can use that formula there. Also, if we're, if we're clicking on expense, then I wanna make sure that we're only having expenses. Notice that these are only expenses, right? However, if they've selected income, I wanna make sure that all the income types are the only those associated income types. We've created a named range inside our admins. Notice we have four income types. Notice we have several expense names. Now we've created a named range for those to help us out. So if we go into the formulas and then the name manager, we see that we can have multiple formulas. So the first one is our income types, right? Income type here is using a dynamic named range based on that. And we also have the expense types here too also another dynamic name range. Likewise, we also have account and asset accounts, right? So that's going to be very important. So we have account asset accounts. So if we take a look at the asset accounts, I've got a dynamic name range for the asset accounts. And likewise, I have exactly one for the liability account here. So I've got four different name range, income names, expenses, account, uh, bank account, or asset accounts, and of course, liability accounts. So we have all four of those. And that's really going to be important. If we take a look inside our financial back in our financials if we decide to make a transfer right we don't know what account they're going to be transferring from it could be any account so it could be whether it could be liability account right they may may transfer from their bank account to pay off their credit card so it could be a checking account and then it could be two account perhaps it could be their um American Express card to make a payment, right? So we don't know exactly what. So we need to make sure that the data validation located right here in cell N9 changes based on the entry type. So when we make, again, when we change it to income, I want to make sure that it's income accounts or expense accounts. So how do we do that? Well, that's going to be on change of N5. When we make a change to N5, we want something to happen. Okay, well, let's like, take a look and see exactly how we're going to do that. It's going to be on a worksheet change event, right? When I'm making a change to something, a specific cell here, worksheet change, that's when I want it to happen. And what cell are we going to focus on when the user makes a change to N5? So right here, if the user makes a change to N5, not intersection target, nothing, and we want to make sure N5 does not equal empty, then we want to make some changes, right? So we're going to dimension the entry type as a string. The entry type is going to be whatever the user entered. 
Okay. Also, rate, I want to delete. Anytime we change validation, anytime we make a change, we must first delete the validation that's here. Any validation that's here must be deleted. So that's the first thing to do. Regardless of what they change this to, we're then going to delete the validation here. So the first thing we do is delete that validation. And then we're going to use select case. Select case is helpful because there's multiple options here. And it's going to be based on that entry type. Now, if the case is income, what do I want to do? I want to take N9 and I want to set it to that income type formula, right? That formula is going to be that named range. So I know that when it's changed to income type, if I go into the data and data validation here, we want to make sure that it is set up as income type. However, if they make the change to expense, I want to make sure that it is back to expense type, right? So here we have a list of expenses. So we want to make sure that it's automatically set to those expense type. And likewise, if it's either a payment or a transfer, we want to set N9 to that accounts, right? So if we take a look, I've got another one. Let's go into the data, data validation here. And then we see that it is all accounts type. Now we have another one called all accounts type. What is that? Let's just go over briefly on that. And that's going to be in the admin screen. So we have something called all accounts type. And I believe that it is right. Actually, I got two of them. I've got, here we go all accounts right so i've got one that's going to be all accounts now i've got a particular macro that's going to help us with that but we'll go over that in just a little bit later but basically there's a single list and that that's important because if we add a card right if i if i add a card mastercard right i want to make sure that that automatically gets added in there when we run that macro so that's going to be very important when we add it in and this is important because if we decide to add one let's add in mastercard right i want to make sure that that list gets updated automatically with that new credit card automatically and that's done through a macro which we'll go over and so what i want to make sure is that, that we have a list of all of the accounts and that what's going to simply mean all the bank accounts and all the liability or credit card accounts. I wanna make sure we have a single list. And then of course, we're gonna have a name range that handles that. You just saw that and it's called accounts all. So we got that all account types. So it is here called all account types and that's the dynamic name range. So this particular list is going to be used for either payments or transfers. We want this set up to all account types. So going to the data, once again, we see that it's set with all account types. How do we do that? Well, that's going to use select case. So if it's an income type, we want to set that data validation to the formula income type. If it's an expense, we want to set it to expense type. And if it is either a payment or a transfer, we want to set it to all account types. That's going to automatically set the validation based on what the user has entered. Okay, great. So that's really important. That way they can set it up here. And we want to make sure that two account is also going to list all the account types, right? So the two accounts always going to be the account that is always going to be static and it's going to always be the all account type. So the user has the freedom to make a transaction to any from or to any account. The only difference is the label here, right? We want to make sure if it is an expense or payment account, I want to be to account. Otherwise, it's going to be from account, right? So that's what I want to say. It's either going to be payment account or to account. So so let's go over this label here. If we see income, right, we're sending money, we're getting a check, we're gonna send that money to an account, right? If it's gonna be American Express, of course, it's gonna be paying it off. However, if it is from a checking account, it's going to increase that checking account. So it's gonna be the two account, right? We're getting money and we're putting that money somewhere. We're either paying down debt or we're increasing an asset such as the checking account or our cash, right? However, if it is an expense, right, I want to make sure that it is the payment account, right? If we're if we have an expensive type and we see, let's say we've got a restaurant and we're paying that restaurant with our checking account, debit card maybe, I want to make sure that we understand that this is the payment account which we're paying it from. We're paying that restaurant bill from it. So this is the payment account, right? If we're making a transfer, a payment or a transfer, we're transferring it to this account or payment to account, or we're transferring it to an account. So we want to make sure this allows us to use uh, just two entries, and we can easily allow the user to really give a more personal touch to that so they can understand exactly what is going on. These dynamic labels really help us to do that, although this particular is always going to be the same account. We have a budget amount, and we have an actual amount, and then some notes. Great, so continuing on. So we understand how we're changing that validation to this, and that's on change of N5. So when we go back inside the entry macros here, we understand that it's new. We're setting that up. And now what we want to do is we want to run a macro that's going to save or update. And that means if we make a change here, if I set this to 50 and 50, 
I want to know, is it a new transaction or is it an existing transaction? That's very important. How are we going to know that? Well, we know that through this row right here, B4. We know that there's no row associated with this. So if we set this to just something and we can now we see that we've created a transferring from probably wouldn't be a transfer on this one but if we decide we're going to expense account we want to expense fifty dollars for dinner and it's going to come from our debit card i want to save that single entry we know that it's going to be a new transaction because that is there's no row associated with it so we need to assign a row and we also need to assign a brand new id to that so when i save that entry and then automatically we get this entry saved this fade out message here we take a look inside our entry database at the last row that we just created. We see that we created three online and expense, a one time, B45, on 630, restaurants, the checking account with a budget amount and an actual amount of 50, and we did not put any notes in there. So we can see that that transaction automatically was able to handle that in a new transaction. And that's going to come with this macro right here called save entry. Now, if I decide I want to make an update to that, and our budget amount was 50, but we went over budget because we ordered some extra food, saving that entry, we want to make sure that now it is updated. And we know it's updated because we already have a row that's associated with that. So when we go down to the bottom here, we see that our update is automatically Handled, we see the actual amount is 60 so we know that, that update so this single macro will handle both new transactions and existing transactions and we can do that very very simple based on a uh, single b4 value the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the user has filled out all the necessary fields right they're very important fields we need to make sure we've got an expense type we need to make sure that both of these are filled out we need a we may not necessarily need a budget or an actual amount. The amounts probably could be blank, but the entry date is certainly important. We got to have that, and we definitely need the accounts. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that certain fields get filled out. Now the required fields I've set them to six, and what I'm going to do is simply count the values, count those cells that contain any type of a value or any type of text, and we're going to use count A for that. So N5, P5, N7, P7, N9, and N11, making sure that they all contain values. Right? I want to make sure that everything contains values at least all the important ones not necessarily p10 i didn't i didn't add in because we may not we may have a budget amount but no actual we may have an actual but no budget so I, these are not required so what i want to do is if i know that six fields have been filled out if it's anything less if i create a new entry and i don't and i forget to put an account in there i want to make sure that we cannot save that entry and i want a message to come up saying please make sure to add an entry type entry date entry type I put entry type twice here and account before saving the, this entry. So what we really need is the associated accounts. So how do we know that? Well, because we see that the required fields are four, but it's less than six. So we need to make sure that we have all that if B8 is less than six, we need to let the user know. And that's just what we did here. If B8 is less than six, please be sure to add an entry type, entry date. Let's just put account uh, that's, and let's put an income or expense, income or expense. Okay, I'll just put that in. Okay, before saving this entry. Okay, so that's it. So we're going to exit the sub because we know the user has not filled out all the required inf information. Okay, but assuming that they have, then we can continue on. Now all we need to do is determine is this an existing entry or is it a new entry? B4 will tell us that. B4 is that associated row. We know that if B4 is empty, it is a brand new entry. However, if B4 contains a value, we know there is a row that's associated with that. So B4 will help us determine if it is a new entry entry because b4 is empty we can then set the row up that row is going to be the first available row based on the database we can also set that next entry id that next entry id is going to come from b5 using that max formula and it's going to go directly into cell b3 and then all we need to do is assign that brand new entry id to column a of that entry database and that's also going to come from b3 However, if it's an existing entry, all we need to do is take whatever's in before that database row and place it inside this long variable called entry row. Because we have data mapping, it makes it a lot easier. Again, just like we did when we're loading it, this time we're going to do reverse. We're also looping from 2 to 10. We don't need to use the first column because that first column is that database ID. We already have that there. So we don't need to save it. It's already in column A. So all we need to do is simply take whatever is inside this particular here, whatever's inside this cell, this is the row one, right? I'm looking inside this cell. I'm looking in N5, P5, N7. When I find whatever's there, I'm going to place it in column two, three, four, and just move it on because I already know the row associated. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. 
So once that all that data is basically brought over from these fields here into that database here as we loop from two all through the last column 210. That's it. That's all we have to do. So once that's done, we can then I want to run two macros. I want to reload the entry types and reload the entry. Why is that important, right? If we take a look inside here and we added brand new, let's say we have uh, expenses here. Okay, and we have all these expenses. I don't know if we have, let's say, let's look in the admin. I think we have a transportation. We don't have any transportation expenses, right? So if I decide I'm going to add in a transportation expense, I want to make sure that that also gets listed here, right? So if I add a new entry and I decide it is an expense, right? And I decide that that expense is a transportation here and we'll scroll down and we'll add that in transportation. And we need a payment account. Let's say we used our credit card for that, or let's say our MasterCard for that here. I want to make sure that uh, we could put an actual, maybe we didn't have a budget, $15. I want to make sure that notice there's no uh, transportation here. But as soon as I save that entry, oops, better add in that uh, reference or bill number. That probably shouldn't be necessary. I don't think. I don't think N7 is really necessary there, so I'm going to save that up. So there we go. So now transportation is automatically added in. Now transportation is automatically added in. Okay, let's take away N7. To, to do that, what we're going to go is taking the required fields. I'm going to take N7 out of here because I don't think that should be required. Okay, go in now. And now what we want to do is now we notice that we only have. Uh, let's say let's clear that out. Right, we don't let's say we don't have one. It's five. I want to make sure that less than five is okay. So we're going to go back up to the save and update, and we'll just change this to five. That's sufficient enough for the required fields. So now we can save that entry. So the point was that I want to make sure that transportation gets added here. And notice we have a single entry for transportation, right? That's why I want to reload this list because if we added a brand new expense that was never before, I want to make sure that that expense gets loaded into this list. Therefore, we are going to rerun that macro that reloads those entry types. I also want to run the macro that's going to load these entries. So we're going to run the macro that reloads this list, and we're going to run the macro that loads this list. That way it's automatically done. And let me show you that one more time. Let's go ahead and new entry, and we'll add in a another transportation expense, okay, here. And let's just add in bus tickets, and we'll use the payment account. We can use a different payment account if we want. In this case, it could be cash. And then now uh, let's add the count amount of let's say ten dollars. Okay, so now we have that. Now we're saving that entry. We don't need the bill for so notice that because we reloaded this list up, automatically the right one got selected. You see how nicely that works? We know that it's automatically selected. It works really well. It's very, very user-friendly, so they know exactly that brand new one got listed. That's why we have to run both the types and the entries. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that we're going to run that saved message. Now that saved message is going to come up when I save it. You see that pop up save message. The only time I don't want that save message is when I create, let's say I create multiple entries. I want to create this. I don't want the save message to come up 12 times. So what we're going to be doing is when I create it 12 times, I need to set a difference. So we're just going to use create multiple this. So when I create multiple, I'm going to set this to true. When B11 is true, and I'll go over that macro with you, certainly we don't want to have that save message pop up 12 times. So what we're going to do before we run that save message, I'm going to make sure that B11 has to be false, right? If B11 is false, meaning we're not running multiple entries, then we can run the macro that's going to save that message. That macro, all we're going to be doing is simply taking a shape, that shape that you just saw, right, that faded out, and I'm going to be taking the transparency and it's going to set it from 1 to 100. And we're going to reduce that transparency, and then as soon as it's almost completely transparent, we're going to hide it. That's it for that macro. Okay, the entry load we've already went over, so that was either creating multiple entries. Now, this is a great macro, right? If I want to create, if I know that we're going to be taking the bus tickets every single week, or let's say every day, let's say every, let's say every week, since we don't have day. <laughs> I guess I could put that in there. So let's say we're going to take that bus once a week, right? Every week, and we want to take it for, let's say, eight times. I want to create that bus ticket automatically. I want to create eight entries. So I want to do that right here. Clicking that button is going to automatically create that those eight entries. And we see that eight entries have now been. So we see that now every single week, that bus ticket has automatically been added in here. So we didn't add a budget amount. If we wanted to add a budget amount, we could just do that. And what I like about this, as soon as we save it, it's automatically going to be saving. I really like that, that feature that we have there. Okay, great. So we see that we certainly don't want to save that, that saved entry. Notice that message didn't come up there. So all all I really want to do is determine how many that we're going to be creating, 
how often it is, and then automatically create those. Notice that we have this on 6.30, right? We, we created this one initially, and then we started our on this one, 116. We created two of these, and now with January 16th, 23. So every single week, another one got created for every date. Okay, so we can do that with this macro. That is the macro. Now notice that it's kind of nice. Notice this particular button text. You see it is dynamic, right? Which is kind of nice. Create eight entries. If I change this to 10, that button text is going to be automatically updated. So how do we do that? Well, the button text, if we take a look inside here, is tied to a specific cell called B10. B10 is where it's tied to. And B10 is here. So taking a look in here, and we see that B10 is simply equal to create and then a space, whatever's in P17, which is the number of entries that we have, and entries. So we can create a dynamic button text when we link it to a cell. The cell is there. So when we see that the cell here, and we escape out of there here, and we look at that, we see this the cell is called create 10 entries. So we've tied the text of that button to cell B10, and we could do that. So now the macro that's tied to that is where we're going to go over now. So we can create a dynamic button. It kind of helps helpful so the user knows exactly what they're going to be creating. Continuing on, so this particular macro is the one that will run. The first one thing I want to know is the entry frequency string, and I want to put that as a string. That entry frequency is going to be either weeks, months, or years. So we need to put that inside a variable. I also want to know the dimension, the frequency quantity, the entry quantity, how many we're going to be putting in, how frequent is it, and we need to keep track as we move through this. If we're going to be entering 10, we need to keep track from 1 to 10. So we need a variable that's going to keep track of what entry that we are on. I also need to know several dates. I need to know what is the entry date, the date that we're entering, what is the start date, what date are we starting on. We're starting on, on of course, this date right here, N14. And I also want to know the next date as we loop through that. Okay, we're going to focus on the entries. I want to make sure that, again, let, making sure that B9 is less than 4. Please make sure to fill out. This shouldn't be. Let's just update that here. I also want to make sure that uh, it's going to be exactly the same as we did before. Let's do this. I'm just going to copy this. B8 is less than 5. That's what it should be. And we want to make sure that we also have the required fields as we did before. So I'm going to just paste this in here because that's going to update that. If B8 is less than 5, please make sure to add. So we want to make sure we're saving the entry. We want to make sure that the required fields are there. Okay, we're going to set the frequency quantity to whatever's in 016, that frequency quantity right here. I need to know that. It's going to be one. How often are we going to be doing it? I also want to know the entry frequency. How many are we going to be doing? P16 is the entry frequency, right? Is it weeks, month? That's a string variable here. P16 is that frequency, okay? How often? Weeks, months, or years. And I also want to know that start date. What is the date that we're starting on? That's going to be located here inside N17. That's going to let us know. B9 is before. Let's take a look at that. That was kind of important. I need to make sure that when we're creating these, these four fields must be filled out. That's what I just remembered. These four fields are required, right? And let's take a look inside B9. Required multiple entries. These four fields are very important. That was important. It's also important that we do have that, so we do need both here. I need to know that those four fields are done, right? I want to make sure that, but that will automatically take care. When we save and update, it'll make sure that we've already created the required fields. So I want to make sure that there's a value here, a value here, a value here, and a value here, right? Four different fields. B9 will tell us how many of those fields have it. Using B9 count eight, O16, P16, P17, right? We're going to count all the text. If that's less than four, then we, they have not filled out the required fields. That's why it's important. I just remembered. Okay, so we need to know all those when we create multiple entries. I need to know, it, right? If the user leaves one of these blank, we know that we cannot save multiple entries. I need to know that. Please make sure to fill in all four multiple entries. I need to add an E at the end of that. Okay, so that's very, very important. We need to make sure they can't do that. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And of course, we could also place this right in here just as we did, right in the save here. We certainly want to make sure that we also have the correct number of fields in the original transaction, right? If we're duplicating something and we need to duplicate multiple times, we still need to make sure that we have all the required fields. That's also important. So both are important. So we can put both down here. We need to make sure that it does have the required fields. Okay, so both is good. Continuing on. So the next date, I'm going to set the initial next date as the start date, right? So the first, our first transaction is going to be this. And then as we add more, that next date is going to go up one month or one week 
or one year, depending upon what we have set here, or two, or every depends on that. And so this is what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to run a loop. And then let's say we're going to, oh, here's where we're going to set multiple entries to true. I want to set multiple entries to do. This is going to make sure that that pop-up entry save doesn't come up. I only want that when we're doing a single entry at a time, not when we do multiple entries. This is the differentiator here, B11. When we set that to true, that fade out message will not be appearing. Okay, so continuing on, setting that to be 11, that will make sure. We're going to set the entry number. We need to loop through all the entries. We need how many we're going to create. If we're creating 10 different entries, we're going to go from 1 to 10. First thing what I want to do is in P7, I want to set that next date. That date of that transaction located right here in P7, we need to set it there. Once we do that, I want to make sure that we're clearing the assigned ID. This is very important. Why is that important? It's important because we're creating a brand new transaction. So we want to make sure that any entry ID here gets cleared out. That'll trigger a brand new uh, particular entry because entry will be left blank. Okay? So as soon as we clear out entry ID, we know that it is blank. So that's very important. All right, continuing on. We want to make sure that we then save that. We're going to run the macro once we've cleared out the selected row. Once we have cleared, once we've set the date, we're just going to save that transaction. It's going to run that macro that's actually going to save it. Once that macro run, the record gets saved automatically. And then all we need to do is secure the next date, right? The next transaction date. So we can do that using select case. We've already determined the entry frequency, whether it's months weeks or years if it is weeks all we need to use is the date add function right we're going to add that next date is simply using the date function we're going to be adding weeks so ww is the code for that we're going to be adding the frequency quantity how many weeks and based on the next date so based on the current next date we're going to be creating a brand new next date based on the frequency so is it one week two week three weeks right we can do that and that's automatically going to calculate the next date very powerful of course if it's months we're going to do the same thing the code for months is months if whether it's every one or two or three months we're going to take the current next date and we're going to add on to that based on the number of months that we need to add same thing for years except the years of the code y y y y so it's four y's that's automatically automatically going to calculate the next date. That's all we need to do is as we loop through this, it's simply going to be taking that next date, placing it in P P7, clearing out the existing ID, which will automatically trigger a new ID, and then clicking save update. So that's how we can create many unlimited entries very, very easily. Okay, so all we need to do is let the user know once it's completed, once we've exited the loop, we've created all of them for all the particular entries that the user wanted created. We're going to let them know based on that entry quantity that so many uh, types of transactions. What is that type of transaction? Is it income? Is it expenses? Is it transfers? Based on whatever is located in N5, or actually, sorry, N9, based on this expense type here, transportation, whatever is located here, letting the user know that they've already been created. So let's say it was uh, transportation expenses. Let's just say transportation entries have been added, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to set B11 back to false. This is going to make sure that it's set back to false so that that pop-up message will appear here as long as B11 is false to save that entry. And that's going to that fade-out message there. So that's all we need to do to create multiple entries. Well, the last macro for entries is the delete one. And we kind of skipped it over, but it's right here. And that's the same one that's tied to this. If I want, if I've created something and I want to delete, it, I want to make sure to do to delete it. So we can click delete entry and we're going to get a pop up that says, are you sure you want to delete this entry? If yes, that entry is going to be deleted. We're going to reload this list up. And of course, nothing's going to be selected. We're going to go to the new entry, allowing the user to either enter a new entry or select an existing one. Delete entry, we're going to do that. The only difference is we want to make sure that determine it hasn't been saved before, right? So let's take a look at, uh, let's say we have a new entry. And we enter an expense type, but we decide we want to delete this, right? Now, it has not been previously saved, right? So deleting this entry, if we say yes, is simply going to clear out the existing. There's no database road to exist. So when you do need to di differentiate between has an entry been saved or not, B4 is going to tell us that. B4, if there's no row associated with that, we know that we don't need to delete any database row because it has not been previously saved. So first thing, what we're going to do on the delete entry, we're going to let the user know, are you sure you want to delete this entry? If it's no, we're going to exit the sub. If B4 equals empty, that means it has not been previously saved. We're going to go to not save. Simply going to skip these two rows and go right to here where we run the macro to create the brand new. It's going to clear out all the existing cells. However, if it has been saved and B4 is not empty, we're going to set that entry row to whatever's in B4. We're then going to go to the entry database and we're going to delete the associated row using entire row delete. 
All right, and of course, after we clear that new entry out, we're going to reload that list of entries there. That's simple. That's all we need to do to create the entries. All right, great. So we've gone over the first part of it, right? The most important part, right? How do we quickly easily add entries to the database, multiple entries or single entries. So we've done that. And of course, how do we show these entries? The next part is how do we take that data that we've now added in and create these financial and put it in a position where we can then work with it, right? So what I want to do is I want to create some pivot charts. That's really going to help us out and create those budgets that's going to allow us to create this really dynamic dashboard, okay? There was one thing I did quite skip over a little bit briefly, and that was here. Now we may want there are times we may want all types of income and or expenses or we may want all accounts. Notice when we add that account it got added to this list. And that's going to happen on change events. So when I make a change to any of these expenses or income, I want that list to show up here. If I make a change to any account name, I want that list to show up here. So if I change this to IRAs, right? Maybe we have multiples. I want to make sure that it gets changed in the list of all accounts. And that's going to happen on change events. So let's take a quick look at that inside the admin here. When we make a change to either E8 through F34, meaning here, E8 through F. When I change an income name or expense name, I want that list to be updated here, right? So if I add an expense here and I call it, let's say, water expense, I want to make sure that that gets here. And I also want to make sure that it's automatically alphabetized so that it's easier to find. And we're going to do the same thing here and here, right? So if I decide we're going to add a brand new asset, maybe we have a, let's say, equity, any kind of equity account, right? And just put it in there. I want to make sure that it gets added in here and it's also alph alphabetized. Great, because it is a dynamic range that will handle these accounts. So how are we going to do that? Well, if the user makes a change on any one of these, G8 through I34, well, that would be for our accounts here. User makes change. Now, yeah, I noticed that it, it will have, it'll automatically run here, but it's probably not necessary, but that's fine too. Just an easier way to do that. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the best way to do that is simply using it on change events. So we're going to create two macros, both of the ones called entry type list and what's called account list refresh. So inside our module admin is where we have both of those. So this one's for GoToSheet. I'll cover that in just a moment, okay? That's simply the single macro that's gonna help us do that. Uh, use this navigation here. Okay, so for the entry type list, the first thing what I wanna do is clear out A8 through A9N. I wanna clear all these out, right? Making sure that those are cleared out. If we're gonna be creating or updating that list, we certainly want to clear it out. Now we wanna keep in all types and I wanna keep in all accounts. Okay, so what we're going to do is the last income row and the last expense row. I'm going to put those in two variables. I need to know that last income row, which is 11, and I also need to know that last expense row, which is 19. I'm putting those in so variables right here. I also want to know the list row. The list row is going to be the last income row plus one. We're going to set up that first, right? So if I, the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this income and I'm bring them over here. I'm going to bring them right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the next row available, which is B13. So I just want to put the last list row. Then I want to bring this. So basically it's going to go like this. I'm going to inside VB. I'm going to first I'm going to clear these out. Okay? This is how it works if we do it manually right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring these in i'm going to copy these in and bring those paste those values in here then i'm going to bring these in i'm going to copy those i need to know the next available row which is 12 i'm going to paste those values in then i'm going to take all these and i'm going to sort them alphabetically and that's going to happen automatically when i make changes to anything here all right so first thing we we'll want to do is get that list row then what we're going to be doing is going to bring over this income types just as i mentioned to you we're going to take these income types here and we're going to bring them right in here. So that's with this line of code. Then the next, we're going to bring over the expenses. I'm going to take over all the expenses from F8 through F from the last expense row. And I'm going to bring them over to the list row. Remember, we've updated this list row. That list row is that first available row after the income. And we're going to bring it all the way over into the last row. So list row plus the list row plus the last expense row minus eight, right? I need to know the last expense row, of course, minus eight. We only want to know the total number of expenses, right? If we know the last row is 19, right? Minus eight, we know that there is 11 or 12 plus one, right? Right. So we want to bring over all of those and bring them over directly inside here to make sure that they fit. So we're going to bring those 
expenses over any income. Once we brought them over, I want to update that last row, just using the last row. Then what I'm going to do, if the last row is less than nine, we're going to exit the sub. Why if it's less than nine? Because if there's only one row of data or anything less, we know there's nothing. We don't need to sort it. But however, if it's larger, then we do need to sort it. We're going to base that key on A8 after we clear the sort field. We want it in ascending order. We're going to sort on normal. And we want to set that range to A8 in the last row. And that's going to automatically sort them. Very, very similar for the account refresh. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to basically clear out all of the accounts here, bring in all of our bank or asset accounts, bring them in here, then bring in our credit or liability accounts and bring them in here. Then we're going to sort them accordingly, exactly the same as we've done here, determining the last asset row, the last liability row, determining the list row, bringing over our assets first, bringing over our liabilities second, determining again that last row in column B this time, then sorting them based on B8. So sorting them again ascending. And that's all we have to do. So every time we make a change here or anything, right, if we want to make sure that if we want to change it to MC, right, we want to make sure that it's automatically updated in here. And again, making a change here. And that's going to be really helpful for us when we do this. It's automatically going to create that list. So we can have nice and updated lists of all accounts based on what the user enters. Okay, also in the admin, you saw another macro, just a single line called go to sheet. And that's going to enable us to create this particular really cool menu that's going to allow us to go to individual sheets. Now, the best way to do that, to use a single line macro, is to make sure that the shapes themselves have the same name as the sheet. When I click on the selection here, we can see that this particular shape and this particular shape both have the name of admin. This one's called financial entries, and so is this one. So we see the icon has the same name as the shape, right? Making sure that the icon and the shape both have the same name. When we do that, we can then use the name of the shape that we've selected to automatically go to whatever sheet by that name. Therefore, we can then have as many buttons as we want and as many shapes as we want. We can use a single macro with a single line of code to create this really incredible menu. And that's all we have to do. So to do that, we just use a single map. Inside the admin, that single line of code is called go to sheet. We have assigned a single macro to all of these shapes inside this particular menu here. One single macro. So if we look inside any particular, either any shape within that, we click assign macro and we see that it is that called go to shape, right? So it is this one. And all we need to do is take the name of the shape. Now the name of the shape is called application caller. All we need to do is click this workbook sheets, application caller, activate. And all we need to do is make sure that the name of the shape is the same as the name of the sheet. Notice that this name dashboard or entry, right? Financial entries. Here's the name of the sheets. Same here. Same as down here, dashboard, financial entries or admin. We just need to make sure that they're exactly the same. And if they are, then there's no issue with that. It'll automatically go to the correct sheet. Okay, very good. So it's just one there. Keep in mind that when you do run this macro from VBA, you're going to get an error. And that's simply because there is no macro that actually called it. We called it from here, not by clicking a shape. So make sure to run anytime we use application caller. It is important to actually click the shape that is tied to that, right? That shape must have a name. Okay, that's it. So we've gone over go to sheet, entry last, and last refresh. And then also we have account entry list refresh. This one is going to account both of them. So then I, I thought maybe we might use it. I don't think I used it though. I've got a single list here with all accounts and all. We didn't really use that, but it could use it in the future. All accounts and all ones. So this is all account entries. So I created another macro to combine all the accounts and all the expense and all the income into a single list. So, but I don't think we used it, but there's a macro that runs it here. Okay. Great. That's it. That's all we need. Now what we want to do is we want to focus on how do we get the results that we want. Now we, our goal is to get the results inside this dashboard, especially in the net worth where we have some calculations. I need to know the total assets. I need to know the total liabilities and I need to know the net worth. Now how am I going to get that total assets, right? I want to make sure basically I want to know all the assets in here. I want to know all of the assets associated with this. We can then, let's go, we can either high call, I'll keep them, I'll keep them visible. I want to know basically based on all the transactions that we've entered and by the initial balance, I want to know the balance of the savings account. So our initial balance is 25505 Based on all the transactions, 
I want to calculate the balance of that savings account. I'm going to use it in this sheet called pivots. And so we're going to be going over most of this data. But if we scroll over here, we see that we have something called assets and liabilities. And what I want to know is the bank assets. I want to know the total assets associated on this bank. So what I want to do is I want to link. I want to create a link. So I've got a link here. So that means any notice that we change this. So any change based on the admin G8 all the way down to admin G32 is simply linked. So if I go inside our admin screen and I look in our assets, G8 all the way through G34, actually it should be 34, but it's automatically linked down there. So how do we do that? So we're just going to use a link. So what that's going to do is any changes that we make, it's automatically going to be linked. Then once inside the pivots, I need a formula. I need to know what is the balance of that. The first thing what we want to do is, of course, add in the initial balance, which is an admin H8, admin H8. Taking a look inside here, inside our admin H8, this is the initial balance, H8. So I want to add that in, plus what do I want to do? Well, if we take a look at the financial interest screen, when we're using, I want to determine what are we going to add it, right? If I know if it's an expense, if I make an expense here and I decide, we're, let's focus on that checking account here. If I make it, if I have a checking account, I know that's going to deduct, right? I know it's going to be deducted, right? We have an expense. We're using our checking account. That's going to reduce the value of that checking account. If we have a $100 expense as entertainment, it's going to reduce that balance by $100. However, what if we have an income account? What if we have an income type transaction and we get paid by the work bonus? I know that that's going to increase by 100 or whatever the transaction amount is here. What if we have a payment, right? If I make a payment from a specific, it could be from anything, right? Let's say we make a cash payment to our checking account. I know that's going to increase our to account. I also know that if it's a transfer, let's say we make a transfer from one account, let's say from our, let's take a look at from our, uh, let's say we get cash. Let's transfer from a car, another channel, our savings account, right down here. Let's say we transfer from our savings account to our checking account. I know that that's also going to increase. So what does that tell us? That tells us that a single type expenses is going to deduct from the account. However, income, payments, and transfers all increase the value of that checking account. And we're only focused on the actual amount, right? Some named ranges are going to help us. So let's go over that one more time. Every transaction that is dealing with expenses is going to decrease our checking value. However, the three others, income, payments, and transfers, are going to increase the balance of that account. So knowing that and understanding that, we've created some named ranges based on this, right? It's going to be very important. I'm going to need to know the entry type. I'm going to need to know the account that's been associated. I need to know the income or expense. And I need to know the budget, the actual amount. The budget's not going to help us for a balance. So the actual amount. So we've created some named ranges that are going to help us quickly turn those into formulas that will allow us to calculate that. So we go into the formulas and then name manager and we go into entry. Let's sort by name here. And we see they all start with entry date. We have one for entry date. We have one for budget amount, which is not going to use at actual amount here so let's do, we have one name range for actual amount and that's basically going to be all the actual amounts here let's see entry actual amount here i want to know what the name range is for those actual amounts and so we can see that there's dancing ants around this actual amount let's go in here okay so we can see here we go the dancing ants around we know that that's actual amount i also want to know what is the entry account what is the account that's associated so here this one's called entry account that's the account and I have another one called income or expense, right? Entry, income or expense type. So these are very, very important, okay? I want to make sure. So if I'm looking for something, I know that an income, right? If the income is associated with a bank account, I know we need to increase that. If it's transferred to that account, it's going to be, and of course, another one for the account, right? We got that covered. Okay, great. So knowing all that, knowing that we have those named ranges, knowing that for asset accounts, right, decrease with expenses, increase with transfers, increase with payments, and increase with income. We can then take a look inside our pivots and at a formula that is going to help us calculate. So if we take a look at the savings account, we've got a formula that's associated with that. Now let's take a look at that. First of all, we always want to add in the initial balance from A and H. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use a sum if, right? I want to sum if the entry account amount. That's what we're going to be summing. We're going to summing, excuse me, the actual amount. We're summing the actual amount, right? Not the, of course, we don't want to know about the budget amount. We only want to focus on the 
actual amount. So we're going to sum it based on this. The account, that account must be what's in R, right? So that's the account. has to be that account. I also want to know if it does not equal expenses. Remember, if it does not equal expenses, we're going to increase it. We're increasing it if it's not in expenses. However, we're decreasing it for everything else. So minus, right, because this is the increase. So basically, we're taking the increase it. If it does not equal expenses, we're going to increase it plus whatever our initial balance is. However, we are then going to decrease it. If it's, if it's expenses, we're going to decrease it. If it's payments, we're going to decrease it. And if it's transfers, we're going to also decrease that amount. So each one of these are some ifs based on the R5 and based on that entry type, whether it's expense, transfer, or payment, those are going to decrease it. However, we could put equals income. We could just put equal to income here. You know, that's fine. It wouldn't matter. So we could do just that. It's probably a little bit less confusing. Equal, right? So we could just do income. I think that's be a little bit more clear. Same thing, though. You get the point. It's income. If it were income, we're increasing it. And otherwise, we're going to decrease it. Okay, so that's fine. That's going to automatically handle that. And you can see that that's going to take care of it. It's the same amount, whether we've done it or not. And of course, because R5 is not absolute, all we need to do is simply drag this formula down here. And that's going to cover us for every asset type. So for every single asset, that's how we get the balance, making sure we're starting with that initial balance and then adding it in. The total assets is simply the sum of the total columns. Okay, great. So we've covered total assets, but what about liabilities? Now let's take a quick look inside our transfer here. Now, a liability is something we owe, right? We know if it's an, ex let's say an income, right? Let's say we make a transfer, right? Let's take a look here. Liability accounts, an increase in a liability is something that we owe, right? So if we have an expense account, we'll start out with an expense account, and let's say we are going to buy groceries, and we buy it with our credit card. Let's take a look, MasterCard. We know that that's going to increase the balance of our credit card. Increase, right? If we're if we have the payment for paying our groceries with our MasterCard, that will increase the balance. That will increase the liabilities of what we owe, right? Okay, great. Well, what about if it's an income? I don't know necessarily think an in income, right? If we have an income, and let's say we have a work bonus, and we pay that we send the money to our account credit card, well, that's going to reduce the balance, right? It's going to reduce the balance. If we transfer from our bank, let's go ahead and go to transfer here. If we make a payment, that makes a little more sense. If I make a payment with my checking account and I pay that MasterCard bill, that's also going to reduce the balance. However, if I also make a transfer, we can use the transfers. If I transfer money from my checking account to my MasterCard, that's also going to reduce the balance, right? So basically, Again, just the opposite. If we have income, if we have payment, or if we transfer, that will reduce the MasterCard. If we have an expense, that will increase the liability. Okay, So we have three different ones, three different transaction types that reduce it, and one transaction type expense that increases the balance. Increasing the balance is what you owe. So knowing that, understanding that, we can then go into our balances and we can take a look at that. Now keep in mind that gets a little more tricky because we have additional types, right? So we'll go over that. But basically what we want to do is I want to look here. We're going to use, of course, we're going to start out with that opening balance. This opening balance is in J8 for our first account. Inside admin, we see that J8 contains that opening balance for that car loan. That's what it started off to be. As we make payments, it will reduce, right? If we take out more money from the car loan, that will increase, okay? So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to use sum if. Again, we're using sum if we're entering the actual amount, right? And we're going to be based on the account. Which account? The account in B5. If it's an expense, we know we're adding it, right? So we're simply, if in expense, right, we're adding, let's say we're, we're buying dinner with our credit card, that's going to increase it. It's an expense that we're adding to that balance. However, we're going to reduce it if it's an income, as we mentioned. We're going to reduce it if it's a payment. And we're also going to reduce it if it's a transfer. However, right, there's a few we're going to add to it if it's a payment, right? Remember, if it's a payment, and we also want to make sure that it's an income expense, right? If the income expense equals V5, we want to make sure we're making a payment on that, right? Or if we make another transfer, we're going to increase that. And that means the income expense account is B5. What does that mean? Well, if we take a look inside the financial entries here, and we take a look inside here, if we decide we're going to put this account here, we want to make sure that we understand. Let's go ahead and transfer, use the transfer payment. 
payment, let's say, let's say transfer, right? But what if we're using this account to transfer, right? That MasterCard, right? We're transferring it. Let's say we, we've taken money out of a car loan. Let's say, let's say we have a home equity, right? And we're transferring money from that to our checking account. We're taking more money out of it, right? More money, and we're putting it inside our checking account. Maybe we need additional money. So this also will increase the balance, right? Notice that the transfer, when this is located here in our income types, this type of transaction will increase, right? Increase. So I want to make sure to cover that too. When we're using it on a transfer and it's here, home equity, this, we're taking money out of that. This will increase the debt, which will increase the balance on that particular liability account because we're taking money out. And we, now we owe more because we put more money in our check account. So I want to make sure in these instances, we're actually growing, increasing that balance. So that is exactly what we're going to cover inside this formula right here. We're going to increase that balance. So if it's transfer type here and our income right here, here is starting here. If it's payment or if it's transfer and the income or expense type is V5, meaning we, we're using the car loan as that income or expense type, we know that we're increasing the balance whether it's a transfer or payment. So we're using this transaction payment. Payment would be the same here. If we're using this payment exactly the same, there's no different here. If we're paying with our home equity into our savings account or paying somebody else, that's going to increase that liability account because we're taking money out. Let's say we have an equity, so we're going to owe even more. So in those instances, it also increases. Good. I'm glad we got that covered. So then again, all I need to do is simply copy down it, copy down it because we know that V5 is not absolute, it's relative, and it's going to copy down the total liabilities is simply going to be the sum of all of that in that specific column. Now that we understand uh, how we calculate the total assets and the total liabilities, we want to determine the net worth. Well, the net worth is simply our total assets minus our total liabilities. So we have here, it's simply going to be S3 minus W3. That is going to be our are basically our net worth. Now, what is our goal? Our network goal is going to be located in M15. What is the goal that we're trying to reach? Well, we set that up directly inside here. Our net worth goal is located right here. Our net worth goal is basically we know we want to increase assets to 500,000. We want to decrease liabilities, what we owe to 50,000. Therefore, the difference of it is our net worth goal of 450,000 located in M15. So we know that our net worth goal is going to be located right here. And we know that the difference is we need 194,119 to reach that goal. And it's simply the difference between the net worth goal and the net worth. What about our total assets, right? Our total assets are basically linked to here. We've already calculated them. What about our asset goal? What is the asset goal? It's 500,000, right? We're trying to reach assets of 500,000. We want to reach it by January 1st, 2023. So this is our goal here located in M13. So if I know our goal, we can simply link to that located here, M13. And we need to know we need $172,000 to reach that goal. Likewise, our liabilities are basically linked to our total liabilities here. We want to bring our liabilities down. We want that lower amount. We want to owe less money. To do that, we know we want to bring them down to 50000 We need to reduce our liabilities by 22000 And of course, this is linked to M14, which is our liabilities right here. We want to link, we want our decreased liabilities to 50000 So we need to reach goal, we need 22000 Just simple math to get to that. So we can set some very clear goals. Okay, so that's everything on this part section of there. Now, also, it's going to help us inside out. We've created some pivot tables. I've got these are associated with expenses. And if we scroll way down here, these are associated with our income, income down here. So we created some pivot charts. Now, of course, I have a pivot table. I've got a table that's been set up here inside our entry database. If we take a look at the table design, we see that we've got entry data. Entry data is the data that the table that has been created automatically. That will help us create some of these pivot charts. So all I'd simply do is just insert some pivot charts, pivot tables here along here and I've placed them directly inside here. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one here is our particular one for expenses. I want to know the difference between actual and budget expenses, right? So if I take a look inside here, our show field list, we see that we want to know these expenses. So I'm going to bring down, I want to know the entry type and the entry date, right? In the filters, right? Because I want to know only expenses, right? I only want to focus on expenses. So if we're going to choose all, I'm really focused on that. So we're going to choose just expenses for this. So I've got to filter it out to just expenses. Now, how do we do that? Well, just making sure that we've selected expenses on those filter types. I don't want income. I just want expenses. Okay. All right. So we've got that. And I also want to know the entry dates. All will set 
that all for now, but having those entry dates can help us focus on the timeline. When we want to build out this dashboard, I want this really cool timeline, and having that data to be able to filter is going to help us. Okay, so I want basically columns of actual and budget, right? So our values are actual and budget, right? So I've just brought down here, we see the budget amount, just bringing down the budget amount here, and the actual, bringing down the actual amount, okay? Going to bring that down here. Now, I want the rows to be the income and expense type, right? I want to know those types, that's going to come directly from our data here. I want to know all the income and expense types here based on that data, and I want to show them, of course, only for expenses here. So that's going to bring in all the expenses based on only those expenses for the period. It's going to sum up i want to sum up right using the sum right here again looking down here we want it sum right so if we take a look inside here oops sorry it's all in the value setting sorry it's off that but i want to sum up the actual right and then we're going to do the same thing with budget we want to sum that so that's going to get us our sum values both on the actual and the budget and it's going to give us a grand total great moving on i want to set some expenses right so we're going to tie this to some charts very very soon but we might as well go over everything here on the screen Right, I also want to know some June expenses. This is going to be important because when we take a look inside our spending, I want to know the total expenses for June, right? And I want to know them. So how do we know that? Well, we can take a look inside our pivots right here. And I want to know the monthly budget. First of all, what's our monthly budget, right? Our monthly budget is located however we set our monthly budget to. What do we know for our budget? Well, our budget is based on all of the items that we've currently budgeted, right? But that's gonna be based on our budget amount. Remember, we've got a named range for budget amount based on our data. So we're gonna use sum if again. And I wanna sum if all of the budget items. This is where we're gonna be summing the budget amounts. And it's gonna be based on entry date greater than or equal to the year of today, right? Greater than the current year, the current month first. So I want to notice on the current year, I want to know the monthly budget, right? So how do we know the monthly budget based on the entry date? What is that entry date? Let's take a look inside that. And the entry date is going to be basically the end of the month. So what I want to know is the monthly month, but I only want to know for June, right? Only for June. And then basically it's, I want to set, because this is the current date. So whatever the current month is, I want to show that up. I want to let the user know, okay, Whenever they're looking at it, it's going to show that current month. So I want to know what is the current month budget? What is the current month, right? So we're going to set it. So how do we set that current month? We can simply use the date entry, the date function here, the current year, the year of today, the current month, the current month of today, right? And then one, meaning the first day of the year. So I want it to be greater than or equal, that entry date, than the first day of the current month all of the transactions that are associated with that current greater than or equal to the first day of the month and also less than or equal to the last day of the month and we can use the end of month to do that so end of month again setting the year to the current year setting the month to the current month and then zero meaning i want that exact month no months before no months after and also we want to make sure that we're just focused on expenses nothing else so entry type must be expenses and that's going to know all of the budgeted expenses so we know that our budget expenses are 2145 and now what i want to know is the difference i want to see how we have we gone over the budget or not right so our current expenses are 2245 we've gone over the expenses now this is almost the exact same formula except this time we're summing the entry the actual amount whereas this one was the budgeted amount right everything else is the same right so the difference is simply the difference so that's we understand that our monthly budget is 2145 our current ex expenses but we also have some goals for june right so we know what our budget amount what is our goals right if we take a look at our admin we want to make sure that we have the in reduce the total expenses to 2500 right i want to make sure that our monthly expenses are less than 2500 or reduce them too so our goal is to get our expenses less than 2500 and to do that all i want to do is i want to know our expense goal this is simply linked to the admin and eight just simply linked to here m8 great so if we continue on here we want to know what our current expenses on this is the same formula as here no difference on these two formulas so we know that we're allowed to spend 255 dollars more this month right and it's still going to be under our goal so that's it and what about our expenses for this is just another exactly the same formula i've done these a few things june expenses because i've linked them there so this is our current month expenses our current month goals and where we are are we under the budget remember the budget it is simply a sum of 
all of these we're focused on these budgeted amounts here what we've added in the budget amounts and so we can just tell the difference between our budgeted and also between our actual and our goals for that so we set some initial goals i also want to create a inside inside our expenses here i also want to create a monthly expenses so i know the monthly expenses and we're going to need to know a pivot for that too well that's kind of important all we need to do inside this let's bring this up save a little bit more space here and all I want to do is I want to know basically by date, right? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to be running a filter both by type and by date. Again, the reason we want to filter out by type is because we're still focused on expenses. I still want to make sure that filter is set for expenses only, okay? If we were to clear that filter, it would show, I don't want to show the clear that filter, clicking OK. It would show all, of course, that's more, but I really want to focus on expenses. So by selecting only expenses, we're only going to show those expenses. And I want to show them by month, right? So we've got the, the rows in the year and the date is the months. All I want to show is the months associated, right? I want to show the values in the columns, and I want to show both the values of the actual and the budget in the columns, actual and the budget. This is going to allow us to create a basically a line chart for that so if we want to insert a line chart we would just do insert a line chart like this and insert a line chart and that's going to create basically a simple line chart and then we customize it to fit into our dashboard so this data is going to be used for our line chart inside our dashboard right here and then we've customized it for the monthly expenses. Okay, great. So moving on. So we understand how we're going to get the pivot data. So we understand both how we can display both the actual and the budgeted on a per month basis. Okay? The dates are going to be all unless we select the slicer, which is going to update. And I also want to know what about the year? I want the annual information for those expenses. Inside this, I'm going to, and I want to show them directly inside here. So how are we going to do that? Right? So we can do that very easily using our pivot data, but this time I want to summarize by year. So here we're going to have the same thing. We have actual. I only want to know the actual in this case, not the budgeted. We could easily add the budgeted as well. Simply if we decide we're going to be putting the budgeted in, we could just drag the budgeted down here and that would show the budgeted. And then, of course, that would make we'd make adjustments. Now they're going to show budgeted and we'd update that. But I just figured uh, the annual expenses are fine enough. Right. So notice it would show both if we want budgeted here. So what we want to do is we can remove that. Just right click and then sorry, it's off the field. Just remove that so that we only show those actual. Right. So we know then 2020. So that's going to allow to create the data. And then, of course, I would want to do is insert. Right. And we could just click. Maybe we want to insert one of these 2D column, little column chart, not the bar, but column. Right. Maybe I just want to enter a simple column and then I would want to customize that based on its filter. So color, we'll go over that in a little bit, but I'm, I'm using this theme right down here and then customizing that accordingly. So how would we do that? Well, of course, we only want to show certainly I want to show some access titles. Maybe I want to show the chart title, but I certainly I don't want to show the grid lines so we can get rid of those. We may not need to show the legend. We can get rid of that. We may want to hide, right? So we may want to go to the home and I want to format that accordingly. Oh, let's go to the format and maybe hide that, right? I don't want to fill on that. So no fill on that. And we also, so we can hide that a lot. So we've got some customization. We'll go over a little bit more when we go over to the dashboard, how we customize it. But basically that's how we create that particular chart so we can easily based on the pivot table data very very easily great now that's it for that the expenses now for the income we have it here income is relatively simple it's exactly the same pretty much except now we're the filter is going to be based on income type june income here we're focusing on only those with their income right so here we're going to use the type as income here the current income this is for the budgeted amount we only want to know the income for the budget amount we only want to know the current income for the actual amount so we want to differentiate and then the budgeted difference here income goals are going to be based on m7 our current income same thing just as what we added in here current current income Oops, forgot to customize that. That should say income right here, not expense, right? Copy that over. Okay, so that's income. There we go. That makes a big budget difference. Eight thousand, right? If we're income goal seventy, we did very well this month, right? We have a difference of ten thousand seven hundred, so we're on that. Um, probably we should equal the budget difference, right? So if we're if we're over budget, right? Our current income minus our income goal, so we know we're under or over. We can create it. That would be a positive effect, right? So we have 10,000 positive effect. Great. So I like that. That looks really good. So we're going to simply going to add the current income based on the actual amount, based on income types, or based on the budgeted amount here. 
Here's our budget amount based on income types. Okay, but our goal set. So what are we different? We're 10,700 above our goal, which looks good. And we've also set our June income just in another one, June income. Great. So again, we also have the monthly. I want to know the mo income per month exactly the same as we did with the expenses, except this one we're filtering it by in uh, income and not expenses. Same thing with annual here, just focused on the income on an annual basis, just like we did with the expenses. Great. So that's it for all the pivot data, right? So now all we did is simply create charts based on this pivot data. And that's exactly what we're going to do now into the dashboard. So our third our second part, oh, I forgot one more thing. Inside our asset and liabilities, we did create some pivot tables to show this. And I created some pivot tables based on the data here. So here I created another table and we see this is called the asset data. And we see that this is called the liability data. So I've got two tables associated with the data creator. And then I created two pivot charts here based on the total. So basically I just want a very simple pivot chart based on this so that we can create different charts on the on our let's see on our income here if we go into the dashboard we see that we have inside our net worth we're going to have two assets by accounts and liabilities by account so i need to show those so these pivots are going to help us both with the assets by account and our liabilities by account that's it okay so that's it that's all we have on this sheet great so now we've covered of course how to enter the data how to evaluate the data calculate the data now we're going to go into the third and final part which is presenting the data and that's going to come inside this dashboard now i noticed that we have this three tab support this is very very cool so in this case if we view the headings here we can see that we're not actually changing any rows or any columns everything stays the same and that's because we're not really using cells to present the data we're using shapes and we're using charts and graphs so we can simply group them together and hide or unhide them using this tab effect when we select on cell d2 we're going to show income when we select either on icon this icon or this cell we are going to show this group of shapes and when we select net, we're going to net worth, we're going to show this group of shapes. Great. So how do we do that? Well, that's going to be on the selection change event. So if we go inside here, we typically inside our dashboard, we're going to just a little bit based on the selection. If the user selects more than one cell, we're going to exit this up. If the user selects from D2 through F2, we are going to then run macros. Now, if they select D2, I want a specific macro that is going to show up directly. Let's take a look at that. If, if they select D2, we want to show a specific group or we want to set a group or a specific group here. Okay, so how do we do that? We do that with macros, obviously. So if they select D2, meaning the income, I want to run this macro, dashboard income. If they select E2, dashboard expense, F2, dashboard net worth if we take a look inside this module called dashboard macros we have just those three very very simple macros so what are we going to do well we've created a group of charts and shapes for income i've got a group called income group for spending i've created a group called expense group and for net worth i have a group called net worth group Okay. Now, if we take a look here, we also see some really cool effects. We see that this tab effort, we see that the border is then gone. And then we also see the background of this cell change to lighter, right? So the non-selected cells are changing. And we can do that through conditional formatting and based on another cell. So if we, let's unhide columns A and B, and they're just reduced. And so A and B here we see that the selected column is six. So I've created some conditional formatting that's going to help us. If I change this to four, it's going to show income. If I show changes to five based on the column, it's going to show spending. And if I show six, it's going to go change that. Sorry, I know it got that off whack, but we can move that back here. Let's go ahead and hide those. So we are, I'm going to reduce these down just so we can see that. We should not have this move inside of the cells. I'm going to fix this, right? We don't want this shape. This should not be moved. I'm going to then hide these here and I'm going to adjust this. This particular background, this one here, we certainly want it. We don't want it sizing with the cells, but we certainly don't we don't want it moving so i'm going to select on this background here if i can grab that it got so many different shapes around here inside the properties what i want to do is i want to then select that and just make an adjustment on that here going into the format shape or size and properties either one would work right here what we want to do is move but don't size or sell this is the one i want to select to make sure that that shape now when i expand those two columns right we want to make sure that is going to move automatically with it which is exactly what i want okay so let's take a quick look back in here again now that we've got that set 
set up and we see that this is like the column. We've got conditional formatting set. So when I make a selection, VBA is going to set whatever column in B2. If I select income, it's going to set that to four. Spending five and net worth six. So conditional formatting is going to help us out with that. If we take a look inside the home and we manage rules, we see a single conditional formatting based on B2, the column. And what that's going to do is going to set that offset color, that fade out color, when we click fill, it's going to set that fill effects from a darker to a lighter green. It is that lighter green that we want to blend it to. I also want to remove the bottom border. That bottom border is going to be for that selected cell. It naturally has a border, but conditional formatting will remove the border. It naturally has this darker color on the background, but it is conditional formatting that is going to add it automatically in. Okay, great. Let's move this over here. Bring this back over. If it's sometimes if it's moved a little too far over the left, it'll move in size with the cells. Okay. And so now, okay, so we have some different information here. Now we're going to move that over. So we're going to run these macros. And all that macro does is simply very simple. For the income macro, all we're going to be doing is displaying a group called income group. For the spending, we're going to just show this group and hide the other two groups called expense group. And that's all we did inside this macro. So we're going to set the column to B4 for the income. We are going to show the income group and we're going to hide the other two. Expense, we're showing column five in B2. We're going to show the expense group and we're going to hide the other two. Likewise, net worth six is the column we're going to set and then we're going to show net worth and then hiding both the income and expense. That is it for the macros on that. Very, very simple on that. Okay, so that's going to get us this really cool tab effect. Very, very cool. And it's going to allow us to show a lot more information as we needed to. Okay, so what do we want to show? Let's start with net income, right? I want to show that June income here. So I've created just a little bit of a shape and I want to know this June income. Remember, we've calculated it automatically and I want to show this title, but I want this title to be dynamic. So when the month changes to April, May, June, July, whatever the month it is, I wanted that month to show up here, whatever that current month is here. So we want this text box to be dynamic and I've linked it to Pivots F61. So if we take a look down here inside Pivots and we scroll down to F61, we see that it's going to be linked to right here, F61. And how do we get the current month? Right, we're going to tag use the text because I want to format it. I want the current date, so that's going to show the date, but I want this cell formatted right, excuse me, I want this value formatted based on only the month. In other words, I don't want to show the day, I don't want to show the year, I only want to show the month, and I want to show it in the long format, which is four M's. After that, I want to show a space and then income. That's going to get us the current month and the income. And then I also want to get that total. Remember, we had that total here, which is total balance. So basically, if I link those two values to this cell inside the dashboard, so notice this value is then inked to pivots G61. Pivot G61 is this one right here. So we've linked that and then just formatted it accordingly and just given it a large font and put it on this background. Great, so that's how we get the income. Now what about income by category? Well, this is going to be based on set amount of data. If we have it, it's going to be automatically linked to this data here. This data right here, we bought both the actual budget. So we were able to create that based on that. So we just created, remember, a bar chart. If we were to do it now, we would insert right? What type of chart do we have? Let's say this bar chart right here. I want to enter a bar chart and basically customize it according to that. So if we want to color it, give it a specific theme color, remove the background, we can remove these things by hiding this and we get a lot closer to what we already have inside that. So it's very, very easy to customize that right here. So we don't need that. We can remove that. And so that's how we got it right in this dashboard. And that's all we did. And then we just formatted this accordingly and given it. So we've got budget versus actual income. Okay, I'm going to use the same exact pivot chart to the, but this time I want to show it in a pie chart, right? So if we go back into the pivots, here we've got them and we decide we're going to enter a pie chart. I want to enter a pie chart for that. Again, we've got the pie chart. Again, all I want to do is hide all those fields and buttons. We have information. We can set the color to the theme that we're currently using, fourth one down, and we get an idea and we can customize the header. We get an idea exactly how once we have that pivot data, it's very, very easy to add in. And we just place that directly in here and added some leader lines and then did a little bit of font. Okay, very, very cool. But now we've got some information here. I want to show the budget difference. I want to know how are we doing on our income, right? I noticed that our current income is 18,000 and I know this, our monthly budget is 13. So we're doing very well with the income on this month. We've made a lot more, right? Then we have 14, 4,435 more based on our budget, right? Our monthly budget 
budget. So our income is doing very well. And as far as our goal, it's doing really good. We've only Our goal is only 7,500 a month, but we're way above that. So notice that we have that information, right? So that we have the June income. Again, here, again, we got June income here. We've given it a thing. This is also based on F51. So we have that automatically dynamically linked, right? And it goes to we have June income F56 and F51, also linked to the pivots here. F56 here, F51 and F56 here. Again, linked, again, using the same formula, using the long march and then income. And then also we have June income goals here. Again, the long month and then income goals. So this will change based on the month. When the month changes, this will automatically change. So will this automatically because we're using these formulas, which we already went over. Okay, so we know the monthly budget. We have all the information. So all we have to do is simply link this. Notice that this difference is, this difference is linked to G54. We already have that difference here. G54 is linked to there. We know how to calculate that, so we understand the difference. And I've just created a bar chart based on this information here. And that bar chart's been placed here. Great. And we've done the same thing with goals. Goals, of course, is linked to G59. And, of course, we went over this. This is linked to G56. And created a bar chart based on the results located right here. So we created a bar chart based on this. So if we were to insert a bar chart, again, just using that bar chart here, entering a 2D bar chart, we, we get that, we get the income total, and we can see, we can customize it from there. Relatively simple on that once we have the data in a place that we want it. So we put that directly on side here. Notice they're all grouped into one group, making it easier to hide and show this entire income group when we change tabs. Then again, we got a monthly income. We went over the sample for this of how to create that. That's again, based on this pivot data directly inside here, this monthly income. We've got both actual and budgeted here. And then we have that linked directly to here. Lastly, we have the annual income. Annual income, again, based on this annual income here so we can show it here. Once we tie these to a specific timeline, which we have, if we take a look at this timeline here. Oops, I moved this over a little bit much. And we'll bring it back over. Let's extend this about to there. Okay, so now I've got a timeline. If I want to show these based on a timeline, I want to show based on a specific year. If I select on this timeline, they're already linked. So if I right click here, this timeline, right, and I decide that we're going to create the report connections, I want them connected to the expense details, the income details, the monthly expenses, and the monthly income, right? So I want them both is. So they're all four is changed, right? So that way they're automatically changed. So if I select 20, or select year, it's going to show only for that year. If I select a specific month, right, I know that it's only going to show me for a specific month, just the reports that I'm, right? This is for total June, it's current month, but this income breakdown and income by category, I want it to very specifically only for a specific month. Okay, so again, this one, this particular timeline, also tied to, and of course, we're only showing the months on that, also tied to the same four different graphs here. These particular pivots are both also tied to the pivots, right? So we've created these pivots here, and they're tied specifically to these pivots so that they can all, right? So if I change the entry date here, the pivot's also going to change, right? So if I change it here, it's automatically going to change. But if I want to select all, I can do that, and I can clear the pivot data here. Now, I've removed a lot of the information here, but if I want to select an entire year, I can select just the entire year, and it's automatically because they're linked to the same exact pivot tables. All right, very, very cool. So we understand the timeline and we got that we've got our sold items and we've got our information well, this is covered up a little bit so we need to bring this up we can add more information here there we go so it's just let me use a little more data a little more space there okay great now spending is almost we don't need to spend a lot of time on spending because it is almost identical right june expenses june income everything is exactly the same except we're using the pivot tail information if we look up in the pivots and we scroll up Everything is exactly the same. Remember, the only difference is we're filtering by expenses here. We're summing expenses, the monthly expenses, the annual expenses. So we've created exactly the same charts, but we've linked it to the expense data here. So inside the dashboard, everything else is linked to the expense data. Exactly easy. Net worth, okay, so expenses, there's no difference other than we're just using the expense data instead of the income data. Very simple, except it's a net worth, quite a little bit different. There's a lot of things going on. Now we understand how we got all the net worth data, and now the data that we've calculated got, we're now going to link it to our net worth tab here inside our net worth here. So what I want to know is I got some text values, total assets, 
total liabilities, and net worth. Now, the total assets, we've already calculated that. This is just the text field located to pivot S3. So when we go in here to pivot, and we take a look at S3, we see that that's our total assets, right? Total liabilities located in W3, net worth located in U2. So inside the dashboard, located here, W3, and our total assets to U2. So we can easily uh, just link some text boxes to that. So we understand that. All right, but I also like to show these really cool bars, right? These timeline, this is going to really help us. So how do we get this really cool graph here? Well, simply this is if we take a look and we were to insert this based on that. So we've got our asset goals here. These are asset goals and our liability goals and our net worth goals. So inside our pivot, I've added them here. Remember our net worth goal here and our net worth here. So how would we do that? Well, if our net worth here and our net worth goals here, and what we want to create is a 3D stack bar. So we're going to do insert right here and we want to look inside the stack right and we want to do a 2d right or 3d stacked bar right so we got 3d 100 stacked bar okay so this is the one we want to create and then we've got some options here so we want to format what kind of do we want to do so the chart design we've got different options here so what kind of things are we taking a look at if we let's go ahead and format that and take a look at the chart area we've got some different information here so going to look at here and what I want to do is I want to create basically a tubular bar cylinder is what I want to do and then we want to remove the depth on that so I want to remove all the gap and I want to overlap them so how do we do that so notice that they're not overlapped yet then what we want to do is we can select the data right we need to combine them right and selecting the data here we see we got one series here but we really need two series we're going to focus on two so if we add another series here, let's call it net worth goal, right? We select here. What is that series value? I want to select here. If we take a look at that, then what we now we have two series. So we see that we have that, but we need to, we got too many series now. So we can go inside the select data again and just remove one of them or edit the other one. We can edit it and say we have a series name. This is going to be the net worth. And we see we want a single point of interest, right? It's going to be this point right here. We can clear, let's clear all that out here and select there. Okay, great. So now we have both and we see that they're now combined here in this. And basically all we need to do is then just customize it according to our color. So we've got our here and then we just set our color. Of course, we're using the theme here. That theme, of course, is going to be that fourth color down here. And that's the theme. And so basically then we can, of course, we can color them independently if we want to. So that's how we get this cylinder and we can go back into the dashboard. So we understand how we got this cylinder. I think I've colored this one a little bit lighter here just giving that that one a little bit lighter here giving that a solid fill if we go to automatic we'll see that it's that darker color but i wanted to go with a solid fill that's going to set up that lighter color of course we can change the color as we want here so we understand that's it and then i've created these labels these labels here are automatically based on the, the information located right here so we notice that our asset goals 327 is current our goal is 500,000. that's going to come directly from our pivot table right so we see that our assets current assets our goal is 500,000 linked directly to here. I've done exactly the same both with our liability, right? Link created a bar here. We close this out now. Created this bar here, this stacked here, one. And it's, of course, 3D with the tubular effect here. And the liability is also based on that. Now, liability, we want to make sure that our goal is 50,000. So we're reversing it. Our goal, but our current is 72,000. So notice that they're reversed. And that's going to be based directly from the data available right here. These two information, total liabilities, 72,000, liability goal, 52,000. So here, and then lastly, we have our net worth goal. Of course, it's our goal is 450,000. We're currently at 255,000. That data is going to come directly from here. Okay, very, very good. So we've covered that. And now also we have some information. We got assets by account and assets breakdown. That's why we created the additional pivots down here below the assets here. So we can create both, of course, bar charts. We've shown you how to do that, right? The bar charts, very, very simple in here based on that very, very quickly and then customize it accordingly along with the pie chart also with the same, right? Inserting, right? The pie chart here based on the same information and then just customizing it according to color and then theme, right? Okay, so we've shown that to there and that's all I've done. So this for our assets, this for our liabilities, that's going to allow us to create these two, this one here and the liabilities here. 
that's it. That's all we have done. So we've created the liabilities and then just updated them, giving them a nice look and feel. Very, very cool. That is exactly how we get this incredible dashboard income, spending, and net worth simply by hiding and showing these. In this particular training, we covered three major parts of this. We first covered how are we going to create a very, very user friendly that allows us to quickly enter not only a single data entry, but multiple data entries with just a click of a button and have that organized in a very quick manner, an easy user-friendly manner where we're filtering by the entry type or anything, and then a single click to get us to all the transactions associated with that very, very quickly. And in whether it's entering a single entry or multiple entries based on date or very different frequencies, whether it's weeks, months or years we then also showed you how to work with the data creating this table inside this and then creating additional pivots so that we can quickly and easily create a very powerful dashboard using all the data that we've calculated inside this pivot screen generating this really incredible dashboard this multi-tab dashboard allowing a user to very very quickly know exactly where they are on their goals for financial plans i hope you have enjoyed this training i bring these to you each and every week please don't forget to smash the like button comment below I do answer every single comment. I love to hear from you. What are your ideas? Did you like this training? What would you like to see in the future? And of course, don't forget to join our Patreon platform where I'm going to have a lot more. And of course, additional trainings, additional resources, downloads, and discounts. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week.